tonight on Hip on the Spot News. We got more juicy info on the dynamic campaign. Edie shares details and current status of the module. Red Star is making progress with their MiG-17 app. In our new sponsor, prepare some discounts. This and more on how I play. This video is sponsored by Fox3 Managed Solutions. Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to talk about the latest news in DCS world. And Happy New 2024! A new year has begun, fresh with excitement and an open horizon and new things to discover. I hope everyone had a good time celebrating, or not, the New Year's Eve. As you know, we got a new sponsorship from Pimax just in time for the new year. This will benefit all of you looking to expand your DCS experience into the high-quality virtual reality world. But more about that later in this video. Meanwhile, ED shares some exciting progress on their dynamic campaign. What? Yes, I wasn't expecting this, but here it is. So it seems that much of the most recent work has been focused on realistic modeling of the frontline logic. You know, that place where the pew 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 is happening. They say they got a lot of things prepared for 2024 and we should expect more information very soon. Okay, okay. But I wonder if we will see anything in the Beyond video, which can happen anytime now, even at the time we publish this video. Getting back on point, the DCS Dynamic Campaign is one of the most important tasks for the future of DCS and it will add a new and much demanded evolution and improvement of gameplay for both single player and multiplayer. Rather than remaking past solutions, they hope to set a new standard, one that provides a high level of interaction, authenticity and immersion, with ease of use in mind. Sounds good! Their goal is to deliver a system that allows players to create their own dynamic campaigns that will evolve based on strategic and tactical AI decisions, indirect player influences on AI actions and direct player influences on the battlefield. This will all leverage existing DCS features such as voice chat plus new ATC mechanics and so on. This has been a hard task and the effort has been underway since 2018 with a small but dedicated team. Their focus in 2022 was on the creation and testing of general AI operations tasks. In 2023, they shifted the dynamic campaign efforts to ground operations. This area will break new ground for dynamic campaigns and includes the following tasks. The creation of a realistic road network system that is based on a new road editor system. This allows units to have appropriate road movement conditions that are tied to the logistic and supply network. So as we expected before, a new supply and logistic system is inbound. This also integrates into the movement of ground units formations. A new ground unit formation editor was also created that allows for the accurate assembly of unit-based levels of command from platoon up to divisions with all command levels in between. Nice, and I can say, finally. But not just that, command structures will vary based on the country and era just like the real world and with correct terminology. Then we should expect the unit formations to operate realistically within their large force structure based on tasking such as road march, meeting engagement, assault, defense, retreat, route and so on. ED has also addressed ground forces behavior once engaged and it seems that this was one of the biggest most complex tasks. Much of this was depending upon force tasking, support from neighboring forces, organizations of frontline forces, logistics like munition and fuel, and disposition of enemy forces. To assist with these new items, a new and improved pathfinding mechanism was developed that considers both the terrain topography and restrictive zones within it. This allows more sensible routing of formations based on the terrain properties. In addition to ground operations tasks, they continue to work on air operations related tasks. For instance, many airfields currently have too few parking space available for large operations. They don't want to be limited to such numbers for large scenarios, so to address this they have developed a new process to expand spawn points for aircrafts. 
Next, they will finalize ground tasking, increasing the level of internal and external testing, and beginning work on the important graphic user interface. That makes me curious on how will this new interface look like. So, it's good to hear more information from Eagle Dynamics on the future of this dynamic campaign. I sure hope we get some more elements being presented in a future video. But as always, you know where you want to be in order to keep in touch with everything. So make sure you subscribe and hit that like button if you find our videos informative. Now I know many of you fly in VR and consider it to be the best way to experience DCS. I do agree, as VR is definitely something else. As long as you got the opportunity to do so and a good system to take care of those frames. Well, just in case, you may have heard of DFR, more precise the dynamic foveated rendering that takes advantage of the human eye's central vision being much sharper and detailed than its peripheral vision. So with this technology, VR headsets use eye tracking and adjusted resolution based on where you are looking, meaning you can experience amazing detail at a lower cost in performance. Pimax delivers this with their crystal headset plus many other features. Why am I telling you this? Well, Pimax is our new sponsor. And if you are interested in any of their products, make sure you use the link in the video description to access their site and take advantage of our $20 discount code HIPGAMESTV. Not only that you get a discount on your order, but you help our channel in the process. As always, link is in the video description. Now let's move on with the news, this time from Red Star Simulations. During our celebrations, they shared their final update of 2023, focusing on the current status of the MiG-17F module. They confirmed that flight dynamics, cockpit module and textures are 95-ish complete, so almost there. As for the external 3D model, well, they say it's complete and undergoing texturing, plus system modeling is in progress with quite some work being needed to be completed. In addition to the module status, they took the opportunity to introduce the ASP-4N gun sight and the SRD-1M radio rangefinder or gun radar in a few screenshots that are of course work in progress. I'll link the entire thread in the video description if you want to read more. So that's it for today. For our patrons, a quick reminder, you can now check the page for the information required to enter our official server testing with our dynamic mission. All information is on Patreon. Thank you all for watching, many thanks to everyone that support our channel, a warm welcome to the newcomers on Patreon, and as always, remember to check our sponsors VR Rock for your VR Blu-ray protection and prescription lenses, Fox3 Managed Solutions for the best DCS servers out there, and Pimax for the best quality VR headsets with a great discount from Hip Games TV. Make sure to give us a like if you find the video informative and subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.